I think I need a bag. No, no. Please record your last words. Do not vomit inside the vehicle. Do not vomit inside the vehicle. If you are satisfied with this recording, speak or select uh. one. Guys, as you know, Pixar has released, what, their 26th or their 27th film? They've been making movies, Chad, at this point for almost 30-plus uh, years. Uh, and we think of all the way back in the day, Chad, to obviously uh, Toy Story in 1995. Look how far they, they, they've come. Remember seeing that film in the theater, Chad, and here I am, nearly 30 years later, watching more of their movies. That's, a, that's an incredible success rate for an animation studio, Chad. I mean, Pixar really changed the game when it came to animation, certainly 3D animation. Thanks to them, it became popular and it proliferated across all sorts of other studios and companies and, and around the world. So you can, you know, I mean, again, not all of their films are amazing. They, they've had a pretty good track record, I would say. Uh, but, you know, there, there's, there's no doubting the, the, the obvious commercial and critical success that they've had, chat. But now at this point, we have come to Lightyear, which is a spinoff of the Toy Story franchise. And I, I like the premise, Chad. I, I initially, I liked the premise and how Pixar was pitching it to people. I thought it was uh, pretty clever that this is the movie that Andy watched when he was a child, Chet, in 1995, that made him want to get a Buzz Lightyear action figure. It's like the movie within the movie that we never saw. I think, I think that's kind of cool. I think that's pretty fun. And I was a huge fan of the marketing chat. Like those those uh, first few trailers, and they were using like David Bowie songs and everything. I was like, wow, this is really slick. It's really cool. I'm loving the the aesthetic uh, of it, chat. Just the way things look. It's clear. I mean, it's wearing its influences, its sci-fi fantastical influences on its sleeves. Um, I was I was really, really excited uh, for this uh, for this movie chat, you know. But then we, we started to have, like, uh, reviews started to come out. And, you know, initially, like, like you know, the social media reactions were pretty positive, though most of the time they, they, they tend to be, unless you're, like, Jurassic World Dominion or something, uh, which, you know, they were not. Um, but then we started to get a lot of critic reviews, and I noticed that, man, there were some really this, – this, this is becoming a very divisive movie where people – you initially had one side. People were praising it, saying, like, oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's a great story. The voice actors do a great job. Chris Evans is a, is a great version of, of Buzz Lightyear because there have been several versions. Shit, obviously, Tim Allen famously voiced the character. Patrick Warburton voiced it in the 2D animated spinoff on the Disney Channel back in the day. You know, And then you had another side. That was saying that it just doesn't have the heart of the original Toy Story. Uh, the story isn't all that interesting. Has pacing issues. The supporting characters are just not up to snuff. And I was like, wow. So I was kind of got this. I was like really excited. But I, I, I kind of lowered my, my expectations a little bit, chat. And uh, I mean, I, I really loved the kind of what the initial premise of the movie was. Where you have Buzz Lightyear here as a part of Star Command. He's going on a mission with this massive colony ship. They land on an uncharted world that seems to have some form of, of life chat. Um, maybe not sentient life, but all sorts of life. And as you know, if you're a member of Star Command, you gotta investigate, you gotta explore. They're explorers, chat, not warriors, explorers. But things obviously happen. Uh, on the planet's surface that leads to them being stuck there for a period of time. And due to certain things that happened in the beginning of the movie, Chad, Buzz, Buzz just blames himself. He blames himself, and he's racked with, with, with guilt. And he participates in this um, experiment within the movie uh, over and over and over again. And that, and that leads to a bit of a time time kind of paradox chat and that's when he gets involved in the kind of the main story and meets a cast of characters so it's like okay this that sounds great that sounds i'm like everything about that sounds really really cool uh but yeah chat but as the movie played out like after that first half hour i got to admit i even though i was like really into it at first I'm like okay maybe not all the jokes are landing so far but i'm really liking the premise really like the look of the film i like what they're doing with buzz right here it's pretty good but yeah i have to say chat after that half hour um i really started to not really like this movie um wouldn't say it's terrible wouldn't say it's bad but yeah it it, it is it is um it's a bit of a disappointment for me uh 
where you have, you know, the Buzz Lightyear character, and aside from his relationship with this other character of Socks, who's this little robotic cat who I'm going to go into more details about, most of the of the other characters and just kind of the general premise and the, the story itself, I was really disappointed by. You know, no characters are really developed in this movie, aside from Buzz Lightyear and uh, little Socks Chat, his little, little faithful robotic companion. And really the only purpose that the supporting characters serve um they're only there for really really comedic purposes and for sight gags and jokes and uh that was that was pretty frustrating to me it's because it, as i saw their, their their stuff all the comedy that they were engaging in throughout the movie it was just very hit and miss for me there was some stuff that i thought worked like oh everything's with chris evans's buzz i i really liked you know he's very much playing the character as we kind of seen him in the toy story films where he's a little, you know, he's a, initially he's like a little arrogant, a little full of himself. You know, he loves to narrate and everything. He takes his his position very seriously. Is is his his position as a space ranger in Star Command is his life, okay? And nothing else matters aside from that. Uh, and I liked what they did with him, but everyone else in in the movie, I I just thought, man, you're you're just so one dimensional. And like I said, the, the comedy, a lot of the sight gags and the, and the jokes that kind of, that they repeat throughout the film, you know, they, they really, now again, comedy is very subjective uh, for a lot of people. What I find funny, you may not find funny. You know, what you find funny, I may not find funny at all. Uh, but for me, a lot of the, the comedy uh, missed in this, in this movie. Um, I mean, aside, aside from that, I mean, the one to be positive, I guess, that, you know, be a little more positive. Like I said, the film wears inspiration on its sleeves. I, I love that there are a lot of just visual references to things like Alien and Aliens and Starship Troopers, even, even Lost in Space, which I think is really cool. Like, this movie has a fantastic look to it, a wonderful aesthetic, which we, we haven't really seen from Pixar. Maybe you could say, like, a little bit of Wally in there, although not as cartoony. This one's a little more serious, a little more gritty, a little more down the mud and stuff. I, I kind of like that. Um, but, you know, despite, you know, being very, a very, a very visually stunning movie to look at, I just think it has, it, it's poorly paced, especially in that second act, and by the time we get to the third, it's kind of dragged down with a lackluster finale, um, where honestly, I was like, you know what, this is, this is fun to look at, but you can, you can wrap this up, the movie's a little too long, chat, it's a little too long for me, and, um, I could appreciate what they did with Buzz's arc in the film, but... I, everything else in the film, it just it didn't feel it didn't it just didn't feel as important. Uh, it didn't capture my interests as, as much. Like anytime we cut back to some of these side characters, which not all of them are like they're awful or bad, but I'm just like, all right, you're just you're just kind of like a stereotype. You know, there's I'll say there's just a lot of funny brown people in this movie, chap, doing funny things. And I'm like, can we not do this? <laughs> can we can we kind of go back to the to the to the main plot, please? And so that was um that was that was frustrating to me, and it was a little disappointing. Uh, you know, I kind of want to get into the like a lot of the characters for a bit. I think Chris Evans' Buzz Lightyear is is great. I think he does a really good job when you're first introduced to him. I mean, listen, I mean, there's a lot. Of, I could see why they casted Chris Evans as Buzz Lightyear. There's a lot of Captain America in, in in here. Maybe a little bit more of an arrogant Captain America. He's like, no, I can do this. I can do this all day, but I got to do it my way. I thought he did a did a great job. And he brought the the emotion to the role. He when he was given a lot of comedic stuff, I thought that worked. I mean, Chris Evans has good comedic chop shit, as we all know, whether it comes to live action or even voice work and animation. And so I, I do think he was one of he's probably like other than one other character, he is the he's the highlight of of the film. But then we get to some of the other people who are just like, what I don't I mean, okay. You have uh forgive me if I'm saying this person's name wrong, Uzu Aduba. Who plays uh, Alicia Hawthorne, chat, and she's Buzz's friend and commanding officer uh, in the movie. She's the one that's pretty much initially in the first third of the film uh, as they're like trapped on the planet. And you know, I thought like, oh, it's gonna be a movie about them and their friendship. Uh, and it, it's it's really not. She serves a very important purpose of the film, and I I I like what they do with that for the most part. But you really in you know. One of the more serious moments in the movie comes from her, which is really good. But but I feel like it's undercut because of the fact that her and Buzz 
We're told that they're really good friends, right? They say we're really good friends, but we don't spend a lot of time with them. Like, that dynamic doesn't come across in the movie. They're telling us that dynamic exists, but we don't really see it. Uh, and that, and that's, kind of, that's kind of frustrating to me. Um, moving on from her, and, and again, she's not in the movie that, very, that, that, that long. And then we get, to, we get to probably a lot of people's favorite character in the film, aside from Chris Evans' buzz. Uh, Peter Stone is Socks, the little robotic cat. He is adorable. He's really, really funny. Um, his rapport with, with Buzz the movie is great. Anytime it's just the Buzz Lightyear and Sock show, I'm like, oh, that, that to me is when the movie is at its strongest. Yeah, that's when it's firing on all cylinders, yeah, when it comes to the action sequences and just the, the rapport between characters. When it's, when it's just them, I, I just, I really, I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm really fucking doing this. this is great. I mean, they have a, there, there's a number of segments in the film. There's, I mean, not, I don't want to get into spoilers, of course, not yet, but there's a whole segment of the film where at one point they need to get to a ship, right? And the process that need to get it. And it's blending everything from uh, like, you know, sci fi thrillers to like sci fi comedies. And it, it's really great. And you have their back and forth. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, anytime it's them. I think the movie is at its at its strongest. That that's its true strength. This relationship between these two characters. But then we get to after that, you know, th their dynamic works. But I feel like a, a, a lot of the other dynamics the film tries to establish, maybe those are the ones that I think falter for me. We have Kiki Palmer, who voices the character of Izzy Hawthorne, who is the granddaughter of uh, Alicia, who was Buzz's uh, friend. And, you know, she, her, her character, is, she, she's just, you know, she's not even a rookie chat. She's barely a cadet. Uh, her character is very similar to two of the other characters I'm just about to talk about. You know, she's a very green recruit who has all sorts of phobias and is very self-conscious and uh, wants to be like her grandmother but just doesn't measure up. I mean, you can already kind of tell what her arc is going to be in the movie. It's just that her, like... The other two characters, maybe one not not to such a degree, to, to, to degree, but her but her arc and another person's arc are just very fucking the same, and it's just annoying because she is sometimes she displays a lot of competence, but there's just a lot of scenes in the movie that I can tell you're you're setting up this conflict. It feels like a faux conflict, doesn't feel earned because throughout the movie, Buzz he inevitably has to take care of these three recruits who constantly fuck up and make mistakes, and the whole movie is about really like hey. We're all going to make mistakes, right? You know, obviously it's going to happen, which is true. We all make mistakes in our lives, shit, whether it be in our jobs or our personal lives. I mean, that's just inevitable. But these people fuck up a lot, and it's in a lot of life-death type scenarios. It's like, okay, we, you can't afford to fuck up right now. And I just kind of found that a little aggravating. You know, it's like, oh, really? Like, really? Right when everything was just about to work, you blow it at the end there, kid. You blew it. Uh, literally <laughs> blew it. So it, it, they just have her doing that. Um, and, you know, her, 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 uh, the, the way in which her story finishes, it's very obvious. It's like, okay, okay, okay. You know, and, th and then, but then we get to some of the other ones, which, again, they're just, they're just there to be silly. You have Taika Waititi as the character of Mo, and I love Taika Waititi. I think he's a very talented actor. Writer, director, chat. I haven't seen everything he's done, but at least everything that I have seen of him, from him so far, I think has been great, chat. From stuff like, you know, what we do in the shadows, and obviously what he's done with the Thor movies, and um, Jojo Rabbit, chat. He, he knows how to blend comedy and drama very well. This is the first time that I can speak for myself that I'm like, okay, I was getting fucking annoyed with Taika Waititi in this movie because he is just a goof. Literally, he, it's like almost like thinking about it. Like he's kind of like just goofy in, in in throughout the entire movie. Like he is so nice. I've never seen Free Guy, and I've heard it that he is really annoying in that. But here he's and, the, and in this movie he's really annoying. He is the super incompetent one. He's he's klutzy. He's making countless mistakes that's endangering everybody. And and I know I know that's like well he's a recruit. Of course he's gonna make mistakes. I'm like okay that's fine. And I, not all of our characters are going to be competent. They're learning, but it's just it's that's it, this repeat it. Like he makes several mistakes within a scene that constantly gets people in danger. I'm just like, all right, this is not fun. This is not very interesting to watch. You know, it's just I'm I'm getting annoyed. I'm getting kind of aggravated. It's like, fuck, can we just get to the the next scene? And that, that, that's the other part of the, the problem. The movie chat. Every scene is just trying to get something for the MacGuffin. Like in the in the movie, they're trying to create this fuel source, right? 
in order to create this f fuel source, they got to fill it up with different types of soda, I guess. And then they got to wrap around the sun chat to charge it up using solar particles or solar, f solar flares or some shit. I don't know. Um, they got to do that. Uh, and that, and then, you know, inevitably something goes wrong, so they need this other thing to fix that, and then that doesn't go right, so they need that, another thing to fix that, and it's just on and on and on. In between all of these scenes, where they're trying to get this shit, you get all of these supporting characters fucking up and, and flopping around and being goofs, and that, that's the thing that I'm like, ah, this is just kind of aggravating to, to, to watch. Um, and so, yeah, I was shocked that I, I really just kind of disliked, um, Taika Waititi's TD's character. I, I thought, I'm like, oh, I've liked Taika Waititi and everything. This, I can say for the first time, for me, in this movie, this is the first time where I was really annoyed with Taika uh, uh, Waititi's performance. And again, inevitably, it's, it's how the character's being written. That's what it is, yeah, with the characters being written and their function of story. Like, Taika Waititi, as we all know, is a fantastic voice actor. It's just what he's given is, is not great. Uh, and then we get to the last one who... I mean, I don't think they're annoying. Uh, Dale, I, I hope I'm saying her name correctly, Dale Souls, who plays the character of Darby Steele. Like, I like the whole idea of this character where she's this elderly, paranoid convict who has committed multiple crimes, is, is a weapons expert. Uh, like, she's not incompetent like the other two. You know, she's just, I mean, she's cantankerous. I mean, she's just one note. She's, I mean, like the other characters, she's just very one note. But... I still liked her and her function. At least what she was doing, she wasn't fucking up constantly. She was competent. Uh, other than Buzz and Socks, I thought they gave her some some good lines, some funny moments. And, you know, she's just a very, very dry sense of humor. And so probably of, of all the other supporting characters, even though, again, not a lot of development, not very interesting, I still thought she functioned well enough within the story itself to be like, okay, well, I, I like you, despite, again not having the, not, not being overly interesting, you know, uh, she was the, definitely the, I was, I was never annoyed with her, like I was annoyed with Taika Waititi's character of Mo and Kiki Palmer's character of Izzy Hawthorne, right, and I thought, well, you know, I mean, I guess she's somewhat comparable to Elisa Hawthorne, uh, even though she played a, a, a more important story purpose, whereas this one played a, 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 a better, like, you know, she, she, she has more screen time, and she has, like, obviously uh, 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 several scenes that I found amusing. Whereas, you know, Lisa Hawthorne's, like, really not. She's a plot device. Uh, and then we get to uh, kind of the last one, chat. Which, you know, uh, this one was hinted at for uh, quite a while in the trailer. So then there was nothing specific. I, I, I'm going to be very careful how I talk about this particular character. Zerg is in the movie. Okay? Zerg's in the movie. They are voiced by James Brolin, okay? This is a very... Now, everyone's, you know, I'm sure people are saying, you know, who have seen the movie, this is not my Zerg. Like, Zerg's barely a character. <laughs> Let the, it, like, it, overall, in the Toy Story franchise of Star Command, Zerg's obviously a parody of Darth Vader. I mean, you, you look at Toy Story 2, I mean, that's obviously what he is. He's just, he's the mortal enemy of Buzz Lightyear, but there's not nothing to him. In the original Star Command, the, the 2D animated series, he's just, he's just a bad guy. He's just a bad guy, chat. And in this movie, they do something different with Zerg that I uh, d didn't expect. They add a certain element that I'm like, that you often see and think, I mean, again, I've got to be careful. I, I don't want to... I, I, we're gonna, I'm gonna spoil it in, in a bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to this because this is the, the spoiler stuff that I'm gonna talk about. I'm not gonna spoil it now. But they, 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 they do something that is very tropish uh, in a lot of sci-fi movies with, with Zerg. And um, it, it, I didn't realize it when watching it, but I'm like, oh my God, this is what this is. <laughs> and I didn't realize it. I think James Brolin does a decent enough job. He's fine. But he doesn't really get a lot of screen time. He really doesn't get any voice lines until the last third of the movie. So if you if you were if you were uh, looking forward to seeing what they were going to do with Zerg, there's not a lot there. There's there's honestly just there's there's not a lot there. But again, at the same time, there wasn't a lot with Zerg to begin with. I felt like they they're like, okay, we're going to do our own take on Zerg. But what they did just felt really overly familiar and reminded me of a other another sci-fi film. 
or a sci-fi adaptation that they made into a movie that was like, I don't think you want to remind people of this movie, even though I think it's been long forgotten for a lot of people. But, but yeah, I just, you know, I loved you. James Brolin's an amazing actor, Chad. I mean, the guy's like, you know, I mean, he's up there at this point. Uh, he's, I mean, what is it, late 70s or 80s? Uh, and the guy's massively talented. And I just felt like he just, he didn't get enough to do. I would have liked to have seen him more as the character of, of Zerg, so... But again, that's all I'm going to say on the character right now because I don't want to get into spoilers of that. But we kind of we kind of come to the end, uh, honestly, chat. Where, yeah, it's again, I can I can praise the movie for its aesthetics, its visuals. I I love that you know Pixar made their own version of Alien or Starship Troopers. I mean, there's segments where they're literally you have the bugs from Starship Troopers attacking the characters, and like that's pretty fun. I was like, this is this is cool. Um, but but uh, and and I, I really enjoy Chris Evans's Buzz Lightyear. It's his. It, I mean, it's it's reminiscent of things we've seen in the past, but it's also very much his own Buzz. Uh, Socks is gonna be a standout for everybody, and uh, I I like I like Del Sol's Darby Steel. Again, she's she's the best of the one note characters because at least she's not constantly tripping over her own goddamn feet throughout the movie. She's at least competent. But but yeah, Chad, I have to admit, I was I was disappointed by this film. I just feel like the story wasn't very strong. It's not paced all that well. I think it has a. Sh I think it, it's strongest in the in the first third. That first half hour is pretty good, and then we get to that second third where we're kind of dealing with all of the supporting characters and the recruits, and they're just there to be goofy. I'm just like, yeah, this isn't working for me. Which is so weird because Pixar has had his. his it has amazing supporting characters in their films in the past, I mean, across all of their 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 movies. Um, I mean, look at Dory and Finding Dory. Or excuse me, not Finding Dory. Not a great movie. <laughs> but look at Dory and Finding Nemo. She's an amazing uh, uh, supporting character in that film. And but she's she's very goofy because she's forgetful. Um, and she has some form of amnesia. Uh, and she's a great foil for uh, Marlin in that movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's weird that they kind of dropped the ball when it came to the supporting characters and the more comedic ones. Usually the more comedic characters in a lot of Pixar movies, they stand out. People go like, oh, we want more of them. But here it's like, I, I don't want, I don't want any more of them. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think the story is just kind of undercooked and underserved. And when we inevitably get to the end, it's like, all right, that was fine. And when we get to the end, you're like, okay, this can end now. I'm good. Uh, it's not awful. It's not horrible. Or any, it's not. It's by no. It's by no means as bad as something like a, a Cars Two, if you will. But this is, yeah, this is not. I don't think this movie is going to be uh, held up as one of uh, Pixar's best by any stretch of the imagination. There's some fun stuff there. There's some enjoyable things, but for the most part, I was left disappointed. Uh, I would probably give this on the double toasted DT scale, like a rental. I probably would have preferred to have watched this at home, Chad, on, on Disney+. Plus. It's funny, you know, they released Turning Red on Disney+, Plus, but I think that movie is fantastic. Um, I think that's one, that's one of my favorite movies of the year. It might be my second favorite movie of the year. Like, that's the one I wish I had seen in the theater, uh, which did get an emotional reaction. I mean, that does have wonderful and well-written and, and uh, supporting characters with depth. You know, it's it's like this movie's the complete opposite. Like you have the the main character of uh, May in Turning Red, and I love her relationship with their with her friends and how they all very different from each other, but they, they they stand out. And but you get the dynamic, like that works completely in that movie. But it's the opposite of Buzz's relationship with characters like Izzy and 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 Mo. You know, aside from Socks, of course. Like there, you just don't feel the chemistry between any of these people. And which maybe at the same time, that's the point because Buzz doesn't want anything to do with them. But, but even by the time where we get to the end where they're all fucking, by the time we get to the end of the movie where it's obvious they're going to be, they have to work as a team. It's like, yeah, I just don't, I don't buy this. I don't buy this. So yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm disappointed by it, Chad. I have to give it, I have to give it a rental. But I am curious to hear what your thoughts are on it so far. Again, no spoilers. I want to ask you guys opinions in just a bit. Thank you for being patient. We will be jumping into a spoiler view in just a bit. Not yet. I'll let you know when we do that. Not yet. But please let me know what your thoughts on Lightyear. Do you feel the same way that I do, Chad? Or did you like the movie? Let me know.